Hi everybody, this is Catherine, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to do a small review on a new air cooler that I just received, the Zalman uh, CNPS 20X. Currently, you can find it at like $109 uh, Canadian dollar. It really depends where you live. Uh, the price seems a little bit different. Uh, so you're getting a nice kit, the twin tower with two dual fan, 140 millimeter fan. So really cool. Uh, so first of all, you're getting your thermal paste. So uh, it's not pre-applied. So you need to put that on your CPU. Uh, I will show you the fan. So you're getting like a nice dual fan. This is the first time I see a design like this. The maximum RPM is 1,500 uh, RPM. So uh, pretty good. Uh, and after that, you're getting the twin tower. So you have six pipe pipe on each side, and it's a mix of uh, aluminium and copper. Uh, the max TDP for this air cooler, it's 300 watts, so it's a lot. I'm gonna test it on my uh, 3900X Ryzen. So I will show you first of all what it looks like inside of my case. And after that, we're gonna do some uh, video game benchmark and some benchmark CPUs. So this is pretty much it inside of the case. Uh, it's really silent, honestly. You don't hear it when it's running. Uh, I was using a previous, uh, uh, the AMD cooler that came with my old 2700X uh, Ryzen. So as you can see, like it's very like silent. Uh, you're getting a nice RGB that you can plug directly on like whatever, an RGB controller or just on your motherboard. You can change it with like, for example, your gigabyte RGB lighting or whatever that you're currently using. You don't really see the second fan. That's a bummer, it's, it's between the, the, the two towers, but uh, you still can see the first one and you can change it diff with different pattern that you want to use. Uh, another thing that I want to mention, it's really easy to uh, to install it, I didn't have any issue. I kind of struggled with the Noctua D15, this one was very clean and also you have like a nice space to put your RAM under it, so it's, it's not a huge deal to install that. So now let's look at the benchmark video games and CPUs benchmarks. So now for the benchmark. So I want to mention, first of all, I'm using a Ryzen 3900X. Uh, also, I'm using a Corsair Vengeance 3200 megahertz. All the detail about like the spec that I use for the testing will be in the video description. I was using also a case, a closed case, so I'm not using it in the open environment. So uh, let's start with my first benchmark. So the thing that I did, I, I did four different benchmarks, Cinebench, Time Spy, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Watchdog Legion, uh, and also I activate PBO. So I want to make sure, like, if you don't know, like, how Ryzen works, if it's like uh, better cooling equal better boost clock equal more FPS. So this is pretty much what I did to test the cooler. So first of all, the Cinebench. Uh, I did, did four different tests, so the stock cooler that AMD gave you with the CPU, the D15 for sure from Noctua, the uh, Sit Fuma 2, and the Zalman uh, CNPS 20X. So first of all, we can look at the Cinebench. So for this Cinebench, I was getting 4050 MHz uh, for each uh, core with the stock cooler, and with Noctua, I was getting 4150 uh, 4,100 here for the Fuma and uh, the Zalman I'm getting 4,175. So this is first of all a good indication that the Zalman will have nice performance because you're almost on par. You're a little bit even better than the Noctua for Cinebench. So if you look at all my results for Time Spy, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watchdog Legion, you will see that the Zalman perform uh, very great, honestly, when you compare it with the D15. It's always on par or even better, like 25 megahertz better or 50 megahertz better. So really, really impressed with the performance of the cooler. If we look at the degrees, so you're getting better boost clock, but what about degrees? So this is pretty much it. So first of all, if you look at the stock, it's pretty high. And you're getting really nice degrees, honestly, for a very good score on Cinebench. And I'm getting like 69 degree, uh, 65 for Time Spy, 63 for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and 65 for Watchdog Legion. Again, if we compare it with the uh, Noctua, always on par or a little bit better. So you're getting nice performance from your CPU and also you're getting really good temp for an air cooler. 
So the last one is my games benchmark. So I know like benchmark, uh, synthetic benchmark is not always, uh, not always the same. But I will show you like real one, Warzone, a game that a lot of people was playing, Battlefield 5, Cyberpunk, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Not the benchmark, but more like when I was playing. And this is my uh, boost clock with PBO activated on the 3900X Ryzen CPU. So again, really good boost clock, as you can see, 4.4, 4.4 here. Uh, so honestly, uh, really impressed with it. It's it's really on par again with the D15. So that's about it for my benchmark. So to conclude, first of all, I want to talk performance. Uh, the Zalman cooler is really, really good. It's probably top three right now for air cooler, cooler solution. So for that, really good. Second of all, uh, build quality, really good also. So nothing, I, I don't have anything to say about the build quality. It's really good. For uh, the noise, for me, it's also really good. It's a little bit uh, noiser. I'm getting more noise than the D15, but still, it's really good. It's uh, it's on par with the Fuma 2 from SIT. So nothing else to say about it. For the design, for me, I'm not a big fan of the RGBX. I prefer maybe like something all black, uh, a bit like the Chromax from Noctua or uh, the, I think it's the Deep, uh, not the Deep Pool, sorry, the uh, Be Quiet one. Uh, so really depend what you want. But honestly, if you want RGB, you have a nice case with a nice glass, and, but you don't want a water cooling and you want an air cooler. Uh, it's, it's a really good option, honestly. It's working very well. It's reliable. It's well built and you will have nice performance for your CPU. So I really recommend this air cooler. Honestly, it's a nine on 10, nothing else to say. So if you have any question about this review, about the product itself, or any question about air cooling versus water cooling, just come in in the YouTube section, uh, post me your rig. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.